Welcome everybody to um, our small series um, of webinars and thank you so much for uh, joining us today. We really appreciate it. Um, also, uh, we have a Kimberly Carp professional here to talk about, of course, the topic of today, smart connected restrooms, a cornerstone of today's smart healthy buildings, as you can see from the slide. Um, and this webinar is uh, combined with the publication of our joint white paper with Kimberly Clark Professional on this subject. Um, and I would draw everyone's attention to uh, the chat. Uh, you'll find there a link um, to download the white paper if you haven't already. Um, and equally, there at the bottom of the, of the slide as well, you can see the URL. Um, definitely encourage everybody to download that and we'll be going through um, its content today. Uh, so a little bit of housekeeping from me, um, other than the obviously the white paper, um, we will be um, holding a question and answer session um, after the presentation portion of this of, of this webinar. So I would encourage everybody to ask uh, questions um, at that point. I mean, you can basically type them in the Q and A box. Um, we'll be able to get those then when we when we get going with the Q and A. Also, um, we are recording this session. So uh, we, you will be receiving a link to, um, um, to, to that, which you can use as a resource. And obviously we encourage you to share that with, uh, with your colleagues if you think they'll find it interesting. So let's get started. So um, I'm James McHale, CEO of uh, Memory Research, and we are an analyst company based in Stockholm. And I'm also delighted today to have uh, Matt Trout with us, who is Onvation business leader at Kimberly Carp Professional. Welcome, Matt. Thank you. Great to be here. Good stuff. Um, so a little bit about what we're covering today, uh, which you can see here on the left on the left hand side of the slide. Um, we are first of all, I'm going to kick off. I'm going to talk about some of the uh, smart building trends that we have seen in the market. Um, some of our, our work, which is included into this white paper. Then we're going to discuss some of the behavioral changes that we've seen uh, during the pandemic and the role of smart restrooms in delivering on uh, your KPIs. And then finally, some discussion uh, about the Onvation system and uh, some Q&A to, to finish off. So uh, it should take in total around an hour. Um, yeah, so I'll get going with, with my portion. So we're going to start talking initially, right, about the situation today. And I hope um, this graphic helps to describe um, why we think this is, you know, a real moment for commercial real estate um, owners and managers to consider investing in technology. Um, and also, of course, smart restrooms as part of that. And what we're seeing um, is facts combining to demonstrate the role um, that smart restrooms, restrooms can, pl can play in delivering um, healthy buildings. So, for example, some things, um, trends that we've seen, COVID-19 changing people's level of um, anxiety and expectation around hygiene um, and facilities they find outside of the home. Um, also, the uh, being able to find um, reliable labour for janitorial work, we know is becoming more of a headache for facilities managers right now, um, especially with staff turnover being high, and this is resulting in the need to obviously do um, more with less resource. And then finally, um, really pushing on with the I IoT technology solutions, and we're seeing those now proliferate, prolifer excuse me, proliferate um, across all types of commercial um, buildings. Um, and that's in no small part to um, the cost of sensors being reduced and actually a lot of different vendors coming into the market and really pushing on um, with innovation. So in terms of how we see uh, connected IoT devices, um, you can see here from this work that we did, and um, we've observed definitely a, a marked uptick, uptick in the proliferation of IoT connected devices. Um, and you see projections um, from various industry observers in recent years, and uh, it actually varies quite a lot. You can see that um, it ranges from around 28 billion um, to 75 billion installed devices by 2025. That's across the whole IoT. Um, yeah, and um, we did an, a meta-analysis of this as part of our work, which you can see here. 
Uh, basically, um, we found that that leads to around a median estimate of 25 billion connected devices um, this year, 2022. Um, and actually that represents um, at least three connected devices for every man, woman and child on the planet at the moment. Uh, and despite um, there has been seems to be a, a general trend of um, downward revisions over the past few years, um, projected growth is still significant um, across the board from all analysts. Um, and it's ranging from, you can see here, around 8.9 to over 30% compound annual growth rate. So that um, basically equates what we calculated to a median growth prediction of around 20%. Probably should say as well, like if you guys want um, a, a, you know, an actual copy of some of these charts, you'll find that in the white paper. So again, you know, click on the link um, if you're having trouble sort of reading some of the text. Um, again, this is this is this slide is really one of the cornerstones of our IoT um, research, uh, and I think you know, there's no doubt really that that IoT is having a transformative effect on many aspects of building automation and control. Um, and also disrupting um, various business models and offering significant new opportunities for owners and operators to you know, operate a more efficient building. Um, also raising employee productivity um, and improving uh, occupant health. Um, and also stimulating the development of innovative new services, many of which we've seen um, come to market over the, the last few years. Um, and the IoT is being leveraged to develop new products and services in a huge range of areas. And, and when we look at areas, and you can see them listed here from access control, um, you know, all the way through to automated demand response. Um, and of course, new application areas about like what we're talking today, like smart restrooms, um, hygiene and health monitoring. Um, and we've seen interest in that grow significantly since uh, the beginning of the COVID-19 pandemic. So um, in our work, where we looked at the commercial real estate as a subsection of you know, the wider IoT, um, our estimate is that uh, connected devices in CRE um, was around 1.7 billion in 2020. Um, we think that that, will be, that figure will be just under 3 billion by 2025. In terms of market potential, um, and again, this is some up-to-date analysis that we did. Um, I think you know the industry did experience um, some challenges in 2022. Um, the combined market for smart buildings, hardware, software, and services, though, is definitely set to grow, and we think that um, it should be worth around 94 billion by 2025, um, representing around a 7.4 percent growth rate um, um, from, from this year to 2025. Verticals of particular interest have been healthcare, data centers, education, and commercial office space. Um, and what you can see here is our assessment of the market. Um, and, and we've um, put that into three levels. So you can see here operational efficiency, uh, level one, level two, more about optimization, level three, more about innovation and differentiation. What we're seeing is, is that there's still only a small proportion of buildings that have actually reached the level of sophistication of level three. Um, and I think progress, we are moving towards that, but progress is slowed by a variety of factors such as um, technical legacy of building systems, um, underinvestment historically in modern technologies and buildings, and also concerns around um, compliance, uh, data privacy, security, et cetera, uh, and also um, the lack of technical expertise. Um, but that said, you know, we definitely see uh, plenty of successful implementations of solutions in the level one and two area, and that's becoming more widespread. Um, so with while well, the combined value offered by focusing solely on level one in the model is what we would you know, term the, the low hanging fruit of, of smart building initiatives. Um, we think of course there is plenty of value potential to be had in level two and three. As, as companies move up that value chain, um, you know, we can see them adding new initiatives 
um, to the range of solutions that they already have. So, you know, we hope that we will see um, uh, enterprises uh, transition on, on through that. So yeah, that's that's basically my uh, my portion looking at the wider IoT uh, in buildings. Uh, and I think while um, that's the picture of the smart building, let's now focus a little bit more on on the restroom, right? So traditionally managed, I think, in the same uh, labor intensive way than it has been for for, for quite a few years now. Uh, let's discuss how we can bring restrooms into this uh, smart realm. Matt, over to you. Thanks, James. Um, so as James mentions, restrooms have traditionally received less attention in the move to smart systems versus energy or business systems management. But they actually represent an outsized opportunity to impact people's perceptions of hygiene and how well a building is managed. In fact, a 2020 study by Kimberly Clark found almost three quarters of respondents said a bad restroom equals poor management. And that's important when you think that the typical office worker visits a restroom three to four times a day. And so that's hundreds of opportunities to create a positive impression or otherwise. According to the research, three out of four people feel unsafe returning to the workplace and 70% cited the provision of hygiene, hand washing and toilet facilities as one of the most important factors they use to gauge the hygiene, safety and wellness of an office building. And interestingly, six out of seven of the most important factors listed that, they, that people looked for for triggers were cleaning and hygiene related. And 62% of respondents said that cleaning, seeing cleaning in action, so actually seeing someone physically cleaning, was, in a, was an important and valuable signal that the building was clean. In a similar vein, the annual hygiene, uh, healthy hand washing survey conducted last January found that 86% of Americans are more conscious about meeting germs as a result of the coronavirus. And that concern has led to a frequency a spike in the frequency and care people take over hand washing and hand drying. And we're actually seeing that translate into change behaviors. And these are behaviors that require facility managers to adapt to a new reality. The good news is that a smart restroom system provides real-time visibility of what's actually happening within a facility. The charts you see here are insights that are available to users of the Onvation Smart Restroom system. But as you can see from the chart on your left, before COVID, at least traffic flows followed a fairly consistent pattern across the day and between days. You see the spikes and troughs follow very consistently. What our systems are showing is the impact of flexible and hybrid work hours in the chart on the right. This is taking the form of greater volatility and daily traffic flows. Traffic patterns now vary dramatically between days and even which areas of buildings are being used at which time. This renders traditional schedule-based cleaning routines completely obsolete because cleaners can't flow to where people are and they can only react to a complaint when restrooms or other areas of the building have already failed to meet expectations. A further level of complexity comes from changes driven by increased hygiene concerns. As we mentioned before, people in, we're now seeing people using more soap and towels per visit than they were per pre-COVID. That presents further risks of product runouts and undermines a facility manager's ability to demonstrate their commitment to tenant satisfaction. And this is where smart restrooms can really help. By using IoT technology to deliver real-time visibility into what needs to be serviced in a restroom, cleaning and maintenance staff can now move from reacting to complaints to proactively addressing issues before they arise. And this can be seen in up to a 75% reduction in restroom-related complaint, uh, restroom complaints and work orders. And the use of smart data and analytics means staff can be deployed where they have the most impact in delivering a hygienic experience that people are looking for. So just to give you a bit more detail on how a 
a smart restroom system like Onvation actually works. It can be best really looked at through four key stages. The first is sensors are placed in the restroom, as well as in the toilet tissue, towel and soap dispensers, as well as fixtures like faucets and flush valves. This collects real-time data for the usage and device status. Next, a network gateway collects that data from the various sensors via Bluetooth and securely sends it to the Onvation cloud. Depending on the site and the customer's preferences, this can be done via cellular, Wi-Fi, or even an ethernet connection, or even a co combination of all three across a site. The data is then aggregated and analyzed to deliver actionable insights that are then communicated back to the facility managers and cleaning staff. In the, this can come in the form of real-time notifications to the staff to action right away, and also advanced analytics that allows people to start predicting where they can be next. And all this is um, accessible through a custom online dashboard or mobile app, depending on the customer's preferences. So smart restroom systems offer the opportunity to provide a series of benefits to both building users and to management. Improved hygiene is there through active monitoring of traffic and of the supply levels of washroom consumables. This means smart restroom solutions can help ensure that the facilities are always adequately stocked, so that uh, allows users to properly maintain a high level of hygiene. Improved visibility of real-time data can also help ensure high-touch areas are cleaned and sanitized regularly. And refilling and sanitizing those areas only when necessary actually helps minimize the amount of contact for cleaning staff. That helps reduce their own exposure to um, exposure to germs. Next, we have operational efficiency because facility managers must be strategic about how they deploy their cleaning resources. How do they make those efforts visible and provide that reassurance to building occupants that their health and safety is a primary priority? Building foot traffic and utilization patterns are, remain, are likely to remain highly volatile and unpredictable for the foreseeable future. So the ability to base schedules on real-time activity-based data rather than some historical pattern means they're in a much better position to deliver operational efficiency. It also enables enhanced user experience because that same real-time visibility into restroom conditions and traffic patterns allows staff to be deployed where they can have the maximum and most visible impact, further reassuring users that they're in a hygienic environment, it reduces complaints and improves tenant satisfaction. And finally, smart restroom systems are designed to be flexible and adaptable to different building types and usage patterns. With case studies indicating their deployment in a wide range of environments, including office buildings, airports, manufacturing facilities. And the use of open APIs means that we can connect these systems to integrate with other smart building applications and enable users to have a single pane of glass view of the utilization for their building management team. And mobile, mobile device integration means those insights are ready to share with all the stakeholders within a facility and better forecast requirements and to help deliver optimal service efficiency. The challenges of the past few years have changed people's expectations of hygiene and their use of behavior when it comes to commercial restrooms. So businesses have had to adapt. Smart restrooms are the next step in developing a smart building that enables facility managers to deliver against the expectations of their tenants while maximizing hygiene and operational efficiency. James? Great, thank you, Matt. That was awesome. Yes, okay, so that ends the um, presentation part of our webinar. So we're happy to uh, take questions. Uh, way, ideally, we, and I, we've already got some questions come in, so that's great. Um, and um, if you want to do that, please um, open the Q&A box, uh, type your question in there. I'll get to see that. Um, and equally, it can be questions for Matt. It can be questions um, for myself. Um, so yeah, let's um, let's get cracking. I think one from one from me, Matt, first. Okay. Um, sure. With Onpation, um, let's say I have other IoT platforms that I'm operating in my building. Um, 
how can I, how would you, or can I integrate the information, the data from Onvation into those? So essentially, I, how, how could I get my data out of, of Onvation? Sure. Um, so the system has been designed to be flexible and easily retrofittable into an existing facility. So we use a, open, we use APIs to connect uh, to various systems, be it building management systems, work order management systems. So we connect with those various systems via API, provide the data that's required for that particular service, and provide it into their platforms. So obviously, we can provide data into into a building management system or a work order system. And at the same time, we can help aggregate data from multiple systems into that same interface. So we can collaborate with be it a flush valve manufacturer or someone like that to give a whole, a whole voice. The key with a lot of these systems, when people look for a single pane of glass, is to really think who is going to be the user of that, of that information and be able to provide the key information they need to do their job without cluttering it up with unnecessary pieces of information. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Ken, let's take some questions here from, from the audience. Um, okay, one here, uh, at what size of building and number of washroom is it economically reasonable to adopt um, digitization of washrooms? Sure. Um, there's no hard and fast number on this because the number of restrooms, the size of a Automatically, be it it could be twenty a twenty person a twenty store restroom versus something smaller, but the rule of thumb we've normally looked at is if it's let to get to about six to a dozen restrooms and a facility, depending on how hard it is to manage those, anything less than about half a dozen restrooms, you, you normally got enough capacity to uh, manage those. But we can go as small as you know you can get down as far as you want. It really comes back to when what is viable for the user and at what stage does that extra information about what's happening inside those spaces enable them to flow, flow resources? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I guess it's the economy of scale, isn't it? I guess the more wash, washrooms you have, or, or the, the, the more this you will benefit from this, but equally, you know, you can install it in, um, in and see some benefit from a smaller amount as well. Absolutely. And as you touched on before, the cost of the, the devices and sensors has come down over time. So, you know, as, as that continues, we expect that curve to continue and um, these benefits can be applied to more areas. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, and another question here from, from the same person. Um, can I retrofit existing appliances in my washroom to uh, in the building with sensors or do I need to replace them with um sensors from, from Kimberly Clark equipped with um, with the system. Um, yeah, for the toilet for the toilet tissue towel skincare, it'd be um, Kimberly Clark or Gojo in the case of the soap dispensers. Um, we, we have those because the sensors are actually integrated in to measure the various points. Uh, we measure the how much paper is inside the dispenser, tracking all the, and the metrics of the unit, especially the functionality. Um, we can get predictive if a dispenser is starting to run, run rough or something that we can get ahead of. Mm. So yeah, normally it's a case of yeah we need to retrofit the retrofit the unit, replace the units that are there. But most of the time, that is a these units are designed to be modular, so they're a pretty quick and easy yeah. replacement. Yeah. No, no more difficult than would be to replace a standard toilet paper or towel dispenser in a normal washroom. Yeah, because it's integrated into that. Um, so that will, yeah. Um, are the smart devices sold through distribution? How, how would they go about getting them? Okay. Um, no, the devices are actually included as part of um, the service contract. So we, we come in and we, we work out with the, with the partner, work out what, how, this, how, the, how the devices will be best deployed in their facility to give them the information they need. Mm -hmm. And then the dispensers are, and the dispensers and sensors are provided as part of the service contract. Um, so that the whole piece is one holistic package. Mm -hmm. Okay. The consumables, though, well, for the for the washroom supplies, etc., would still be continue to be supplied through their through their current distributors the same way we. Okay. So the consumables come in as they always have. The um, the smart technology, the smart piece is a separate is is the separate piece. And I suppose this is a sort of. Um 
tangential question here. Uh, what is, is or is there a subscription price per restroom? Yes, there is, and, but that does vary dramatically by the restroom. So uh, we normally will go in and do a site survey with the customer, work out what they need and what information they require, lay out of the facility, and then we provide a, a, a quotation back to the customer and we, can, and we work with them to see what's the best package for them. Okay, so that question there, if you're looking for a price, then uh, email Matt. <laughs> yeah, please do. Um, we we have uh, we can certainly provide that. It's it's not an obligation, obviously. It's just a case if we come in and we'll, we're quite happy to walk through what's the best solution for you. Mm -hmm. uh, again, another technical question here. If I have um, Bluetooth gateways or Cisco Aruba um, APs uh, with Bluetooth gateways, uh, can I use those to gather data and send them uh, to the Onvation gateway? We're now getting into where I call my technical team, but uh, that, the simple answer there is the Bluetooth gateways that we use are, des are designed to take it, bring our signals in. There may be some technical possibility to reprogram or layer an existing Bluetooth gateway to pick up the signals, but we have we have not done that. Normally, we in each case we we provide we provide the gateways, the cellular gateways. Mm. Like I said, that can be cellular. Um, Ethernet or Wi-Fi, mm. those gateways to collect the Bluetooth signals are part of the package we deploy. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and are the sensors powered or, I guess, battery? Um, the battery. Um, the way it works is for the soap, for soap to electronic soap dispensers or towel dispensers, where we a number, a portion of our customers already have power, AC power coming to those units. So there we wouldn't need extra batteries that can run off the power in the towel or toilet in the towel or soap dispenser. The sensors in the bath tissue dispenser or the um, occupancy sensors we have in the rooms to track the number of the traffic flow in the room, they tend to, they tend to be battery and life on those is three to five years. Mm -hmm. And then we just change the batteries. Yep. Um... Let's have a look here. So there's a couple of questions in the chat. Okay, I'll take those as well. Uh, how many sensors are generally required for good analytics insight? Um, and what are the monitoring KPIs? That's a good uh, good question. Uh, yeah, I mean, I obviously, I don't know if there is such a thing as a typical restroom, but you know, what would you expect, I guess, to... Okay, so them? normally the sensors that we deploy are obviously each toilet tissue and towel and soap dispenser has sensors in it. Mm. Uh, and then as far as what other sensors are used, it comes down to one, it's normally one occupancy sensor per restroom. If there's multiple entries into the restroom, that would change that paradigm. But it'd be one occupancy sensor, um, toilet tissue and towel if the customer wants to then look at things like flush valves etc it'd be for each of those points mm -hmm. and how do you position that, um the um occupant sensor i've seen some where they put them like at the door so it's kind of counting people in or out or do you have one that sort of sits in the ceiling um we have had different scenarios i mean we, we've been deploying smart restroom systems for five years now. So um, we've evolved, that technology has changed and we've moved, moved different situations to different restrooms. The simplest and most reliable we've found is, is a simple, a single beam near the entrance to the door, in, near the entrance to the restroom that just people break as they come in and out. Mm -hmm. And that gets, that gets high, very accurate. Mm -hmm. uh... Some just what you wanted, Matt. Some more technical questions here. Excellent. <laughs> well, I paid attention at high school on the my side. <laughs> Regarding the capability to interact with existing sensors, uh, what about sensors like occupancy, temperature, more than just the utility integrated sensor sensors? So the so if we're talking about interact with existing sensors. So the answer is there we can connect if they're already being pulled into a different information system mm -hmm. or a different management dashboard, we, we can connect, we can use an API to get our data to go in and be combined with that information. So um, as far as a specific, if there's a 
I was just actually trying to get back to, I just saw that question and I was just trying to get back to it. Um, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, but I'm, I'm, I mean, I suppose like in some sense, I mean, that temperature sensor or whatever other sensor it is, is going to be connected to a system, right? So even if it's just, you have get the, uh, the, you can take that data out via the Onvation API and then put it into whatever system that they're using. Yeah, so wherever that temp temperature sensor is already sending information, we, if, that, if that's going to a different um, a different system, we can we can connect into that system through an API so that all the information from an area could be coming in. It might be coming in some of it from Onvation, some of it from another information system, but it can be pulled. Great. Um, and again, yeah, that ties into one other question I was going to ask about customization. I mean, that's one form of customization, right? Taking the data, but um, I guess also you have your own interface. Um, how do you how how customizable is that for for clients? Uh, we we basically we we obviously have a standard uh, starting point, but we customize that depending on individual facilities. Every every washroom, so naming conventions can be adapted. Whether the a bathroom a restroom might have six wash basins and fifteen stalls, or it might be a quarter that size. So obviously we adapt it. To, for, to accurately reflect the layout of the site. And we work with the customer to, to make sure the dashboard talks in their language. So that if there's certain names they use for certain areas, we make sure we fill that in so that everybody knows if they see it, if they see about a certain device that needs servicing, they know exactly where it is. So every, that side of things can certainly be customized. Um, yeah, I was then going to ask about the type of information, but actually it's sort of, there's an interesting question here, which ties into that. Um, is there analysis to identify failures or just refilling um, is an example. Um, if the toilet flushes six times and the faucet soap operates once, does this trigger an alert um, that the flush valve is calibrated wrong? Um, yeah, I think that's the gist of the question there. I think it'll certainly, you can look at the, we do look at the ratio of dispense, hand towel dispensing to soap towels, soap dispensing, for example, mm. and, and, and restroom occupancy. So we can work out how, we do know how many times, um, how many occupants have come into that restroom, how many of those people, you know, how many of those translated into a visit to a, a stall. This is how many were straight into uh, just straight hand washing or hand hygiene. And we have seen since the onset of COVID and those increased hygiene concerns, we have seen a, an increase in the usage of soap and towel per washroom mm. visit. So we can calibrate those different across those different systems. I don't think it's news to anybody. Not every, not every washroom visit results in hands being washed, but that's something we've known for a long time. Uh, uh, another question here, what if there are, um, I think that's uh, other, uh, other sensors in the restroom already? Uh, it might be other op uh, occupancy sensors. Oh, yeah, yeah. Already. Okay. Can you use um, Yeah. Yeah, I guess we kind of have answered that one before. Um, well, I think the, and I hate, I hate this answer normally, but it really does depend on whose occupancy sensor it is and how it's connecting already in. But we do find we do prefer to use our own occupancy sensors so that we can correlate the system that allows the analytics within Onvation to provide to be that data, the occupancy sensor piece is a key part of the data. So that's one where we do try to leverage our own system so we can do those calculations within Onvation, the Onvation analytics. Um, we haven't the short answer to James's question is. We haven't, I'm not aware of us trying it, but um, we've certainly adapted other systems mm. in the past. So I'd probably say not right now, but um, it, it certainly may be possible. And it could actually depend even on which, you know, who the manufacturer of the occupancy sensor is. Mm. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And there's, I mean, it's, it's really a hot, um, hot technical area at the moment right there's a lot of vendors coming to market with occupancy analytic systems um, yeah. but i would say you know a lot of them startups and generally they have some api or some ability to you know share data also some sensors which um, have quite a lot of um 
let's say edge intelligence, right? So you could probably yeah. even, um, you know, um, get get the data out of that via some API as well. Oh yeah. Uh, and there's a less technical question from James as well. Um, how do you show return on investment? Is there is there a payback? Yeah, sure. Um, so I think the, from a straight payback point of view, it comes down to how the customer, how are we going to use the product, the system with the customer? So there's no upfront cost. It's a monthly service fee unless the customer wants to capitalize the system. So then it comes down to is that monthly fee, how do we how how do you get the payback on that monthly fee? There's a couple of things we see. We certainly see a reduction in waste um, because this product isn't changed out on the fear that it won't be there, you know, it won't last till the next scheduled service visit. So we do see a reduction there. But the real benefits are measuring in labor and complaint reduction. So mm -hmm. if you think about a normal, a scheduled cleaning service, so the, clean, the cleaning team's working through the building and then they get a complaint about something and they have to go from the fifth floor back down to the first, for example. Mm -hmm. All that time, because they're having to break their routines and, and respond to complaints around a building, being able to reduce complaints in those ad hoc work orders by 75% really means you can be much more productive on your labor. And, and how, how you deploy your labor. Because a big piece we've seen is people don't consider see, seeing a, uh, their cl the cleaning staff checking dispensers or filling dispensers isn't seen by the tenants or as cleaning. I mean, it, it's whereas if we can free staff up to cleaning staff up to be doing like visible cleaning, that certainly does reassure the. Uh, visitors to the facility that you know hey this is something this place is cleaning and it's it's certainly feedback we've had from a couple of our um, existing customers that they saw their their Kingsley scores which is a measure of tenant satisfaction they saw them jump and a big part of it was that the cleaning staff weren't checking dispensers that needed to be didn't need to be checked um, mm -hmm. they're actually the big, being able to be used to um, into places that provided that visual symbol of cleaning and that helps with the whole hygiene perception of the of the facility. Mm. So I think the three areas we look at is certainly waste reduction. Uh, we do see that, and depending on the size of the building, that can translate to just straight disposal costs. Operational efficiency and better use of the labour is definitely better use of your labour is definitely the, a key driver on how they can uh, get that ROI, and certainly customers see that benefit. Yeah, no, some great points. I think one of the most interesting things. I found from doing this white paper was around the waste, right? So that somebody checking the level of, of, of towel, right? You know, rather than they would, if it was sort of less than half full, they would throw that all away just, or, or just, or just put another roll on, right? Rather than have to then come, come back, come back. They know they're going to have to come back again before. So, yeah, I mean, I didn't ever realize that that level of, of waste can occur. Yeah. And, you can understand it from uh, yeah, of course. It's pure yeah. human behavior. It's like if if I if I, I I'm not sure if this is going to last until the next time I'm scheduled to come back to this restroom, so I'm going to change it anyway. Um, and and that's a big driver. I mean, we see you know thirty percent of the product going into some facilities doesn't even never reaches the end user. Um, so if we can help bring that down, there's some big sustainability benefits there. And obviously, the operational efficiency benefits as well. Mm. Yep. So let's a uh, couple more questions here. But if anyone does have more questions, please type them in. Um, use the Q and A box. That's the that's the best way. Uh, okay. Do you have testimonials by end user verticals that can be reviewed? Uh, yeah, we do actually have those on the same place where the website where the white paper is on our website. Um, We've got testimonials there from uh, One World Trade Center in um, New York. Uh, we've also got our healthcare cast, uh, one of our healthcare partners who's been a very good user of the system for a while, and um, and a cleaning a cleaning company as well. So we've got a couple of examples there that people can look at and um, see what works for them. And if there's any other particular questions or how questions around how this would work in my environment. That's something we're more than happy to talk to someone through, talk someone through and see what works for them. 
Yeah. Um, are you, I mean, where do you see over the over the time you've been deploying these systems? Has there been sort of one vertical that's definitely like more interested in this than another, or or is it across the board? The biggest areas, and I think we could be skewed here by where we where you know where we focus as well, obviously. Um, but the biggest markets that we saw initially were commercial real estate. So commercial real estate, uh, so office buildings were, mm -hmm. was a big part of where we first started. And, um, but we moved very quickly. Uh, we saw opportunities with healthcare partners and we're definitely seeing more of a move to high traffic and public areas now. So we've seen that evolve. We've, and the syst as the systems become, and the system and the technology has evolved as well. So we, we are less, we can be much more flexible at the types of facilities we we put this into, but um, we're seeing we're seeing it right across the board. Bed manufacturing facilities. Um, we're talking to customers in multiple market segments, and because in the end it comes down to those needs are very consistent across market segments. It's really about how do I best deploy these limited resources and make make the most use of what of the resources I have. Mm, absolutely. Uh, question here, any plans to add air quality sensors to the offering? Um, I'll, I'll be, yeah, I think that's one, not something we have directly available now, but we do know that air quality sensors are, are available. I mean, the, the thing is, we don't have to go and invent the sensor to, to tie it into the innovation system. So the key is we're, we're looking at the, a big part of what we do is really looking at what is the information customers need in order to make those decisions and deploy resources. So the simple answer is we don't have that now, but it is something I'm aware of some of our partners, those, those, um, de those devices and sensors are available. Mm -hmm. And there's certainly something we could integrate in the future if we saw that, if we saw that need. Yeah. Let's have some questions, please, people. Um, happy to take them. We've got plenty of time left uh, to do it. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I think that was, uh, I mean, it definitely ties into the whole um, wellness uh, thing, right? You know, obviously air quality, we're seeing like we've, and we've written mm. about it, like uh, a lot more interest in that, of course, because of, you know, the COVID being a air, airborne, um, you know, virus, but um, it definitely ties into thing. I could see, I could see there being some, uh, some interest in uh in that, or at least being able to combine the two, right? Um, the, the, the two things, yeah. information oh. about cleanliness and information about uh, air quality. Yeah, and even, even before we were looking, even open beyond smart restrooms, we, uh, like because of Kimberly Clark's background, we're very aware um, odor and smell inside restrooms is one of the key points of pain we see right across the board. And it's something that people take as a visual cue of cleanliness and with something they pick up when they walk in. Um, and it's obviously a point of pain for cleaning staff and facility managers as well. So mm. yeah, if, it's, if that's an area we can tap into as another cue that this, you know, restaurants need servicing, we can certainly tie into that. But yeah, I suppose that, that I think the biggest, sorry, yeah. go ahead. No, I was going to say like that's the whole the kind of tenant or the, sati the employee satisfaction piece, isn't it? But it comes down to what people take as the cues for hygiene. Um, there's obviously visible dirt, but there's also, you know, smell is another key factor. And it, it just comes down to what are those cues that people are looking for? And like I said, when we did that study, obviously visible, visibly clean odour, um, seeing cleaning staff cleaning surfaces or, you know, seeing staff cleaning um, areas is certainly um, their visual cues. And I think one of the biggest things we've found and one of the things we really partner with with our customers on is the human behaviour piece, making sure that staff are comfortable with the technology. It's one thing to deploy the program and deploy the system. It's the other piece here is making sure that the cleaning staff have the confidence in the system and understand how it works so that that behavior change piece enables them to actually leverage their technology to deliver that elevated experience. Because that's critical to the success, isn't it, right? Like it's one way having the data, but you, you have to use the data to... The, the example I use, and my team's probably sick of it, but is 
it's okay to switch ways on in your car, but if you or you know a, a GPS system, but if you're not going to follow the directions it tells you, mm. um, it doesn't help. It can give you all the advice you want, but if you're going to go the same way you've always gone and not listen to what the GPS tells you to do, um, it's not going to help you at all. So it, it's the same type of situation. This is almost like a GPS for an office building. It directs you around the, to the problems, helps you steer and find where the people are. And um, that, but it does come down to, yeah, people have got to use the information. Yep. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, good. There's some questions come in here. Um, I think okay. we covered this one about the subscription price range or per restroom already. Um, yeah, um, I think it's a valid question, and it and I hate to say it, it does it just does depend. Um, it really comes because restrooms come in all shapes and sizes. So, like I said, ha happy to look at a facility, and we can with no problems of providing an estimate on what that is. But trying to trying to do it blind is just going to be misleading one yeah. way or the other. Yeah. Oh, question for me. Uh, what are the most popular types of smart solutions you're seeing being deployed in facilities outside of restrooms? So we've been doing um, sort of a series of uh, work or series of reports and research on, you know, I would sort of say IoT solutions for commercial office space. Um, and we're definitely seeing some convergence there, you know, so where, what I would have, we termed perhaps before occupancy analytics. So um, sensors uh, being used to understand how uh, people are moving and also where they are in the building. Um, and that was sort of pre COVID, pre pandemic, that was used certainly for space optimization. So a lot of companies, especially in perhaps in a process of change, trying to think about you know, how, how can we um, optimize our real estate portfolio? So there's been um, a lot of startups look at that space, a lot of investment, um, and it's continuing to grow. But what we've seen is sort of that merge now with other areas of digitization for, for, for real estate. Um, and one area that we wrote about last year was um, uh, workplace experience apps. So that is sort of an, definitely another area of growth where, um, you know, giving us a tenants or employee employers the chance to um, basically inter, interact with their employees or, or tenants. Um, that could be in the form of booking um, resources like a room, like uh, a locker, or um, even giving them access to the building or um, and again, communication as well. There's an, some event or some, some important information that people need, you're able to communicate with that as well. And we're seeing some more, we're seeing convergence and, and consolidation in the market. So we're gonna be writing a report on that this year. Uh, there you go, hope that answers that one. Uh, one here for you, I think, Matt. Um, what does the setup process look like? How do you map sensors to stalls, sinks, et cetera? Okay, um, yeah, I can walk through that. So what we'll do is we'll walk through, we'll do a site survey of the facility. Uh, so one of our trained installers will come in, work through, work, work with the customer, map out, map out the layout of the site, where the dispensers are going to be, which, where the dispensers are going to be placed, agree on the naming conventions. When the, come, once that's agreed, then once this, each dispenser is or sensor is installed, it is provisioned. So it, it has its own, own MAC ID that gets connected um, and talks to the, so it has its own unique identifier. We then, when it's, once that connects in, the Bluetooth and the central, central hub picks it up and knows exactly who's talking. So we give each, we give each dispenser and sensor its own identification. And connect those into an array, into the array. Okay. So, yeah, it comes down to how the customer wants to map, map their site, and then we map the sense. Then we give the each individual toilet tissue or towel or soap dispenser the connect, connection to do that. And if they use your interface, mm -hmm. um, what are they what are they seeing? Do they have are they shown like a, a, a map of the the restrooms, or do they or is it more about like metrics and alerts and things? There is a map in there, 
Uh, but what we've tr tried to do, especially with the cleaning up, with the cleaning stuff, is it'll give them a, a list of every every device in a room and what the status of those and what the status of each dispenser is. So as they can walk in, as a cleaner walks into the room, they get basically a, pr a list of everything that's in that room. They can see what needs to be serviced and what doesn't. And this is really this is something that actually came back from one of our customers was. Something as simple as a cleaner comes into a room and one of the stalls is occupied and they've got to wait until that stall's vacated before they can check the status on that dispenser. Mm. They don't need to stand around anymore because they can see on their, they can see on the on the app whether or not, okay, that dispenser is still 70% full. I don't have to worry about that for till tomorrow. Mm. They can keep moving around. So that, that's some of the ability of we can help them prioritize where the flow is, even within a restaurant. Yeah. Okay. Makes sense. Uh, what is your opinion on Wi-Fi versus 4G as a mechanism to send the data to the cloud? As Wi-Fi is not so secure and many companies do not want another device on their internal network. Do you have conversations like that with clients? Or? Uh, yeah, we have. And it, it's, it's interesting because when we first launched Innovation, it was a cellular only product because of that, because of that concern. What we have said, um, what we have seen is a mix of customers who want to use Wi-Fi. Um, it depends on their confidence in the system. We, we've got our own, um, obviously, we've got our own security standards and that, and we'll talk to the uh, cybersecurity team at a, at, a distrib at a customer and work out what works for them. We can be completely remote as a cellular system. We do have some customers, um, especially in healthcare, for example, where we've seen that they have, they have multiple Wi-Fi systems in, in a in a facility and as long as we're tapping into the one into the right ones we can work with them and they're actually happier with that mm -hmm. so we so to answer the question we started off with cellular only we've found the we've found the requests that come in to actually expand to include wi-fi and ethernet so it comes down once again it's about flex it's about flexibility we'll, we'll yeah. work out the best way to work with what our customer wants it doesn't surprise me too much. I think broadly speaking, that's generally what we've seen in the market over the past, let's say, I don't know, 10, 15 years, right? There was often quite a lot of resistance from IT departments to have um, operational technology reside, right? Like on corporate mm -hmm. networks. But um, I mean, certainly in bigger organizations, we're not seeing that. We're seeing more... Um, actually around that, around IT companies taking on facilities uh, data. And I mean, I give as an example, it made one like access control. I mean, we, that has historically often, very often been stand, a standalone system on its own yeah. um, wired network. But, you know, we've seen examples now where that's being uh, bought in-house by the IT department and it just resides. It's another, another um, server in their data center, just, yeah. Yep. And the, the onus is on obviously us as providing a system to make sure that we're, we're meeting all those requirements. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Uh, does Kimberly Clark uh, actually provide cleaner training on the Onvation system? Uh, yes, uh, simple answer is uh, what we'll do is we train the cleaning staff on how to service the dispensers like we would with the installation and also provide ongoing support for uh, how with the cleaning app that we provide, it actually even has how-to videos for various basic systems like how to, which, how to change the dispenser, how to change batteries, um, if there's you know, any issues at all with the, disp with the dispensers at all, just basic small how-to videos. And this we've seen is really valuable because there is quite a high turnover in, with cleaning stuff. I mean, it's up around 200% a year in some areas. So this certainly helps with onboarding. Um, so even if we can't be there, um, the, once, once we've got the site, the, the system deployed, uh, those videos and everything else are on hand at all times to help staff. And we do have a customer success team as well that can work with the customer if, and provide feedback on what they're seeing about how staff are interacting with the system, mm. provide some analytics back on so, you know, diff different behaviors and how they can help with training ongoing. Nice, right, we have three questions left. So I think we've got five minutes, we can take these questions. Yeah, 
what is the range of battery life for your power, uh, battery powered sensors? Okay, so once again, I'm going to use the answer of it depends. Um, the the occupancy sensors, so the ones we mount to track traffic are about five years battery life. Um, the towel dispensers, etc. depending on how, and this is where you've got to be careful because obviously the dispensers are, power, they're power dispensers on the batteries, depends on how busy the, the units are. But normally we're saying it's three to, roughly three to five years on a towel dispenser um, on the batteries as well, because a large part of that is actually just running the actual dispenser. So it varied it, because it's dry, it's not only doing the communication of the smart systems, it's, it's, you know, most of the time there's no touch dispensers and they're providing that, they're providing the power to actually drive the dispenser as well. Mm -hmm. But like I said, we do, we are seeing more customers looking at the AC power. So I know Gojo's skincare systems and our, and our towel dispensers um, are they have the ability to be powered into an AC adapter and, and charge that way, which is often a preferred option for many customers. Got it. In the notification, how does the janitorial team know which store to service? I suppose well, there's, they have an app, I suppose, right? Like, well, they, they, they do. And this comes down to the naming convention that we've agreed with the customer up front. So we, it, we can normally say, you know, store one, two, three, or as, and as long as that's what the customer wants, we'll work that way. Um, but yeah, it's, it comes down to the agreed naming convention. Okay, got it. Um, what uh, would you need an array or hub of devices for each floor of a building or for each location of the actual restrooms on each floor? Okay. Yeah, so normally what we find is we'd have a central gateway can cover, and this comes down to the range of Bluetooth more than anything. So 30 to 50 feet, depending on what the obstacle what the obstacles are in, in an area. So it's more driven by the layout of the building. Uh, our gateways can handle up to four restrooms worth of dispensers and, and uh, equipment. It just depends on how, how, close, the, how close those restrooms are to each other. Um, so it's, it's more driven by the range of Bluetooth than any capacity on the, on the gateways. So, we start, we start with here's the, here's the dispensers and flush valves and everything else we're trying to connect. And then we'll look at, okay, what's the best way to array, build in the network array so that we can provide the, the accurate coverage. Got it. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I think we've covered everything there in quite a lot of detail. Um, very interesting. And yeah, absolutely. And thank you, everybody, for those uh, questions. Yeah, some good ones. Thank you. Yeah. Well, look, before we end, um, I'm going to give everyone some some uh, s some information. I think, you know, first of all, like, please download the white paper. Um, I think it's a it's a really interesting read um, and um, provides some colour, you know, uh, to this conversation we've just had. And you'll get all of the, uh, you know, the information from the slides. Um, oh, we've had, uh, what do you reckon? We've got time for one more question. The analytics data, can this be fed into third-party platforms which might be used for other analytics purposes? Um, I think we covered uh, that. Simple, simple answer is yes, yeah. provided we get the API connections. So yeah, so cool. as long as we're connected. Sorry. <laughs> um, so yes, please download the white paper. Um, also, if you have any questions, um, if you want to follow up with Matt um, or indeed myself, um, there are is our email addresses on the on the screen. So uh, you can do it that way, or I'm sure you can go to the uh, Kimberly Clark uh, website, which you can see at the bottom there. Um, either or, um, and if um, I think we managed to get through everyone's questions today, but if there was something we missed, right, um, we will try and follow up on that as well. Uh, and finally, um, the recording, uh, we have recorded it, we will be posting it um, on our YouTube channel. Um, so please look out for that um, in the next couple of days. Uh, yeah, I think and just remains for me to say, first of all, big thank you to Matt. I really appreciate your time today. Oh, thanks for being here. It's been great. Good. And obviously, thanks to everyone for listening. Um, and uh, catch you in a month for the next webinar. Thanks again, guys. Bye bye.